Hi, it's Maria from Steel Dreaming Homestead. Glad to be able to be back with you again. So I'm recording this tonight. We still don't have any internet, and so I will have to wait till I go into town tomorrow to download this. And um, that's what I'm gonna do. So it's time for our story out of the Bible stories one. Now, if you remember, last time Abram had offered Lot um, whatever land Lot, his nephew, wanted to take because their servants were quarreling or arguing, sometimes even fighting, because there wasn't really enough grazing land for all the animals or enough water. And so Lot had seen the beautiful valleys that were down below and how they were green and had lots of water and he thought this is a place I want to be. My herds will go great there and I will become rich. Plus there's the cities and he was attracted to the cities and the excitement that could be there. Even though he knew there were terrible things going on in those cities, he thought it would be safe for him to go. So he left. Uh, now we're on story number five. And this is stories of Abram. And um, so here we go. I just imagine that Abram was sad as he watched his nephew leave and all of his family and all of his servants and all of his animals. Sad a little bit that his nephew seemed selfish and he had taken the very best, but Abram had offered him that, and that's what he did. But God said to him, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward, so in every direction, look and see the land that you can see. To you, I will give this land to you and your seed, which means all of your family after you, forever. Arise and walk through the land to the length of it and the breadth of it, that means the width, for I will give it to you. It was though God had said, cheer up. You don't need to worry that Lot chose like he did. All this land will one day be yours, including Lot's land, and all the rest of the world will be blessed. At this, Abram was comforted, and he removed his tent, took down the tent, and came to dwell in the land of Mamre, which is in Hebron. And there he built an altar to the Lord. Remember I talked about the altars? They would stack a lot of stones together and that would be a special memory place for them where they had got a message from God or they had talked to God or been blessed. He was not there very long, however, before he learned that Lot was in trouble, a lot of trouble. War had broke out around the Dead Sea. Four kings or rulers of cities in that area had got together to attack the kings of five other cities, including the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. It was four kings against five. The Bible says the five lost. So the five cities, they lost everything in the war. The victors, or the ones that won, took everything they could carry away from Sodom and Gomorrah. They called that spoils. I call it stealing. So everything that was valuable, um, that would probably include their a lot of animals, if they had gold or treasures, um, jewels, any of those type of things that they wanted. They just took, and they went away. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, 
who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. So they not only took animals and things, they also took people, I suppose, to be slaves. And there was one of Lot's uh, probably servants that escaped and he found Abram and he told him about it. What had happened? What did Abraham do? Do you think he said, well, that serves him right. He asked for it moving by those cities. Nope. Instead, without a moment's hesitation, he armed his trained servants, born in his own household, 318 of them, and they went on the chase into the town called Dan. Now, we gotta remember, there were no policemen in those days that you could just call and, and get help with. So Abraham couldn't call to get help. If Lot was gonna be rescued, he had to do it. Knowing that his little band of the 318, remember, plus him, uh, was greatly outnumbered by the kings and all the people of those four cities, Abraham decided to attack at night. And he was successful, he won. He chased the enemy almost all the way to Damascus and rescued not only Lot and his family, but all of his stuff and all the spoil, remember that's what they call the stuff that they've stolen, which the five kings had taken from Sodom and Gomorrah. News of the victory spread quickly, and as Abraham turned to Lot, returned to Lot with his goods, and the women also, and the people, he was the hero of the day. The king of Sodom came to meet with him, feeling very grateful, as you can imagine. He, so did Melchizedek, king of Salem, who brought forth bread and wine in honor of the occasion. This, oh, I'll show you a picture of what they think the part of that battle might have looked like. Right there, can you see that? I wouldn't like to be in a battle. This Melchizedek, Melchizedek, the Bible says, is not only king, but also a high priest of God. When he saw Abram, he said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God. And blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered your enemies into your hands. At this, Abram gave him tithes of all, which meant he took one-tenth of all the goods he had recovered and gave it as a thank offering to this man of God. The rest he prepared to return to the king of Sodom. Now, generously, the king of Sodom said, Give me the people, and you just take everything else for yourself. But Abraham would have none of it. And here again we capture a glimpse, a little peek, at Abram's greatness. I have lifted my hand unto the Lord. So it's like he swore to the Lord, the Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth, he said, that I will not take a thing that is not mine, not a thread or even a shoe latchet. Now they, that's a little bit different than a shoestring, but it's how they tied their shoes. Um, I, the only thing that was taken was what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men that went with me. So the soldiers, whatever they ate, that's all that, that he was keeping, not taking any more of the food or anything. Abraham had learned his lesson. He would not let the king of Sodom said, like the Pharaoh had done, that he had made Abram rich. 
Never again would he accept favors from any earthly ruler. How could he oppose the wickedness of Sodom if he accepted money from the king? From now on, his motto was, not a thread or a shoe latchet from any source like this. And that is a grand principle for every boy and girl to follow, for every man and woman to follow too. Never accept a gift that might tie your hands, that means stop you from being able to do something, or silence your voice in your witness for truth and right. A witness is when we are able to tell others about the goodness of God. Never take a bribe of any kind, not even a thread or a shoestring. And here's a picture of the king and Melchizedek. Looks like they were building the altar there. So, you try to remember that and I will try to remember that too. Never to take a bribe just because somebody is more powerful or seems more important than us because lots of times when they act like they're trying to be nice to us, it's really not that they're trying to be nice to us. They just want to have something kind of to hold over our head so that we will owe them. And we shouldn't owe anything to anybody except God. Because in truth, He gives us everything. Of course, our parents, we need to be thankful to them because God's placed them as over us to take care of us and to love us and provide for us. So that's different. They will give you things and, and that's okay. But no earthly ruler. All right, well, it's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. I wanna tell you I love you, I really do. But even more importantly, God loves you and he always will. Tomorrow, or the next day that I get a read, uh, will be a regular story. All right. Good night.